playing old games on modern computers is a very interesting thing. It's an experiment that I've done ever since like 2015, 2016, when I was experimenting with all of these different virtual machines and all of these different setups that I can play my old favorite games from my childhood on modern hardware. And it's become harder and harder as time went on because there are so many things uh, going on with many uh, old games that just are not going to work anymore on modern hardware or modern operating systems. A lot of people have um, actually been theorizing as to why it is that older games just don't work anymore on modern hardware. And a fair few people seem to think that it's all because of the hardware. Computers have just gone too fast or too powerful to run on modern hardware. And there I say, that's not true. It's because of the software that you're running that it's not playing the way that it should. Because, let's face it, operating systems have evolved a lot ever since the 1990s. And um, it's all because of the fact that because of Windows 11, the, ver the operating system that I'm running right now, you can see it right here, there's my system settings right here. And you can see right here, I'm running Windows 11 Pro Insider Preview because I'm in the Insider Preview uh, program. So playing old games on Windows 11 is going to be quite the chore, especially because 64-bit, it doesn't really have that great compatibility with 32-bit or even 16-bit applications. So you're going to have to find a way to play old games in 2023 and it's a little bit of a hassle to get working it is possible to get working but it's going to require a fair bit of work and i'm going to show you guys how you can do it in some of the easiest methods or some of the hardest starting off obviously we got to start off easy with steam now let's just pull up steam real quick and uh, i'll show you guys what can be done with something like it uh, there's also other platforms like good old games and uh, even other companies like EA uh, have actually made it a lot easier for people to play old games on modern hardware or software even. It all comes down to a couple of key features because what you would actually have to do to get old games to work on modern hardware or software uh, is you got to patch it up a little bit, patch it around. There's a lot of methods that you can use to accomplish this. A lot of companies have actually made it an effort to get old games to work on modern hardware. For example, if I wanted to play Roller Coaster Tycoon nowadays, because I did purchase it on Steam, I can do that and I can do that very easily. I don't have to worry about this game not working at all because this is all going through a fair few compatibility layers and all kinds of things that are going on behind it that make it possible for me to just play Roller Coaster Tycoon. So this is definitely possible with games like this. There is obviously also a fair few other games available on Steam and we can just go through the Steam store over here and Let's take, uh, for one example, let's take Humongous Entertainment as a perfect example of uh, a company that has been polishing up their games to work on Windows 11, even though it's 64-bit. Pajama Sam, for example, no need to hide when it's dark outside. A really old point and click to make things happen kind of game that's released in 1996 according to this and it can still be played on modern operating systems because it uses something called scum fm which is uh, short for scum virtual machine which is an emulator that allows you to play games like this on modern operating systems obviously that is uh, an entire emulator for that to work but you could also just install a virtual machine or an older operating system on like pcm which i'm going to show you guys in a second as to how that works but this is definitely a method that you can use if you don't mind spending a little bit of money and when i say a little bit of money i really do mean it because a lot of these games are incredibly cheap I can get this game for like seven bucks if I really want to and play it on my computer and 
absolutely have no problems with it. I can just install this right here, right now, and stop thinking about it. Now, Steam is obviously just one example of a platform where you can do this. Good Old Games is another very good example of this, where they polish up really old games to be able to run on Windows 11 64-bit. And you can play those with very little to no issue on there, but... The thing is, with Steam and good old games, you're going to have to pay a little bit of money for those. And let's say you don't want to bother spending any money on games that you can also download for free off the internet because they have been considered abandonware. That is where, in my honest opinion, the virtual machine comes into play. So let's just dive into that real quick. Now, I've experimented with a lot of virtual machines over the years. And one of my favorite things to do is use a virtual machine for Windows XP, for example, and run this uh, over the top of Windows 11 so I can play old games that are designed for an operating system like this on modern hardware. Now, this is obviously going to route through your uh, modern hardware over to a virtual machine so it's not going to be a perfect solution and the reason why it's not a perfect solution is because some games uh, from especially the 1990s or especially the 1980s were designed with a particular processor or a particular amount of RAM in mind and they were also designed to be 32-bit or 16-bit uh, machines so they are not going to run as flawlessly as a, a, as a game that you would run on actual real hardware. So this is not a perfect solution, although it is a very good alternative for people who just want to play really old games on modern hardware like this. And one of the cool things about this particular method is that it is insanely easy to transfer old games over to a virtual machine. Let's just go over a couple of the things that you can do with this. Uh, when, I, when I go into my virtual machine settings, what I can do is uh, in VMware, at the very least, I can go into options and you get this option called shared folders. And I have this dedicated folder right here for Windows XP things. And uh, when I go to my computer inside of Windows XP, you can see that the drive is mounted to here. And this is where a bunch of Windows XP games that I have saved to my hard drive are going to show up. I also have a couple of serial keys in here because I like to save those that I found from the internet and use them to play these really old games. And to make life even easier for myself, what I did is I installed a program called Demon Tools, which uh, has been started up right here. And uh, if I open up the panel down here, what I can do from here is basically mount a, uh, a ISO file as if it's a real CD on my system. So let's say I want to uh, load up Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. What I can do is just double click this. And you'll find that the actual game is going to be loaded up in my computer as if I was actually running this from a CD. This, however, does come with a couple of caveats. There are a fair few games that I found that are not going to work with this particular method. Because, like I said, you're going to run into some compatibility with uh, issues with the hardware that you're running. Not all games are going to be running into that problem. Uh, there's a lot more games that will work with this method than there are games that aren't going to work with this method. But this is just something to be wary of. When you're going to run old games like this uh, using this method right here, you will potentially run into a couple of games that are not going to work with the Demon Tools method and uh, getting all of this set up. How do you actually fix that? Well. Let's go over that for a second. Very much like it is the case with very old game consoles that you want to play on modern hardware and a lot of other things. There are a fair amount of emulators available that you can use to play console games, particularly retro console games, on your computer. And that is also going to be the case with computer hardware. If you want to run really old operating systems, with the hardware that it is attended, but you don't have the space or the means to set up a complete 
retro gaming system with windows on it with a huge tower on top of your desk what you can also do is just use something like this this is pcm which is short for personal computer emulator and it is one of the greatest things that i've ever used for anything so basically what this allows you to do is set up an emulator i have one right here for windows 2000 and basically it emulates the really old hardware that you might have used back in the 1990s or early 2000s to run computers so right here i have a system with a pentium overdrive mmx 200 and a voodoo 3 3000 graphics card sound blaster 16 for the sound card and this emulator is pretty much going to emulate all of it with very little to no flaw now there are a couple of caveats to this method and you will probably see that very soon when i actually get in the game there are a fair few limitations when it comes to this particular method uh, a lot of uh, the times that i was using this emulator i ran into a couple of stuttering issues with the actual operating system and that's because this is uh still a relatively new thing having to run an entire operating system on emulated retro hardware from the 1990s and 2000s you can already see right there a little bit with my mouse it's a little more stuttery than that vm was i know that it's probably a little bit difficult to tell over the video because i'm recording this in 30 frames per second but it's still i think it's still pretty noticeable how stuttery this really is but things get only more apparent if you're going to run more modern operating systems right now i'm just running windows 2000 which is not the most graphically demanding but if i was to run something like windows xp on here it would probably be a lot harder to run than if i was to just do this so that is one small caveat with this particular method but when it does work it works amazingly well and there are a fair few games that if you can get a game to work in vmware because it just won't detect the disk for example let me show you what happens when i try to run this right here this is a game that i tried to run on numerous occasions to get it to work on vmware and it just would not work period here you go works absolutely perfectly inside of pcm i can go into here i can click start and start a race uh in case you have not ever seen this by the way this is a really fun crazy racing game from uh from the 1990s that i played a lot as a kid and this is one of those games that i wanted to try and get to work on my uh windows 11 machine but just couldn't seem to get it to work because there were just a lot of hardware compatibility issues and uh when i tried to run it in compatibility mode in windows 11 it just would not function properly because there was still a lot of hardware compatibility that were just not working with the game but when i tried to run it inside of here which is actually emulating real hardware you can see it's actually plays and it plays surprisingly well it's obviously going to run at uh, 30 frames per second and sometimes it actually drops below 30 frames per second but it is still very very playable and i'm able to race through this relatively easily so this is definitely a method that i will recommend to anyone who wants to play re uh, really old games on their computer and you're just not able to get this to work for some reason inside of vmware this is definitely a method that i would recommend you look into if you're running into compatibility problems like that although i realized that for a lot of people it is just going to be much better to play the games on the real original hardware that's just the fact with a lot of these really old pc games if you play if you want to play really old pc games especially the really really obscure ones your best bet is probably going to be to just buy an old windows xp tower and play the games on there 
And yeah, so Windows XP Tower is going to be plenty good enough if you're going to be playing mid-90s, late-90s, or 2000s games. Uh, and you can pretty much pick up any tower you want, and it's probably going to run relatively well. Uh, one thing that would be a bit of a challenge are obviously the graphics cards. You do want a, uh, you do want to have a decent graphics card in that machine for the games to run well. But there's a very good chance that most of the games that you're probably going to be playing on any Windows XP tower you're going to buy are going to run relatively well. But anyway, that's just my personal recommendation. If you want to do any of this, I will probably end up making a couple of guides here and there to show you guys how you can build a virtual machine with Windows XP on there and play old games on there. And I could also possibly do an entire guide on how to properly build a Windows 2000 emulator so that you can play all of your favorite really old obscure titles on there that are specifically designed for that particular grade of hardware. If you're interested in that kind of thing, let me know in the comment section down below. And with that, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. My name is Cohen. Thank you for watching.